You know, it's not going to end uh, quietly. Uh, in a new bombshell development in the Karen Reed case, uh, the defense team has filed a motion asserting that the jury unanimously agreed to acquit her of two of the most serious charges before a mistrial was declared. Reed, who was accused of killing her Boston police officer boyfriend by striking him with her SUV and leaving him in a snowstorm, was charged with second-degree murder, motor vehicle manslaughter while driving under the influence and leaving the scene of a collision, causing injury or death. Those were actually the three options that they had to choose from, or not guilty, uh, or a hung jury. And after the month-long trial, the jury deliberated for more than 24 hours over five days before Judge Beverly Cano declared the mistrial on July 1st. The other day, Reed's attorneys, Alan Jackson and David Yanetti, filed a motion to dismiss two of the three charges. The motion, reviewed by Court TV, claims that the jury had unanimously voted to acquit Reed on two charges, including second-degree murder, before telling the judge that they were deadlocked. According to the motion, the defense attorneys began receiving unsolicited communications from three of the 12 deliberating jurors, indicating in no uncertain terms that the jury had a firm 12 to nothing agreement that Miss Reed was not guilty of two of the three charges against her, including the charge of murder in the second degree. Uh, the uh, jury uh, also allegedly agreed to find Reed not guilty of leaving the scene of a fatal crash. Despite this, when Judge Cano declared the mistrial, there was no public polling of the jury. So no court record exists to confirm whether the jury had unanimously agreed to any of the charges. Don't they usually do that? It's up to the judge in uh, Mass... In, uh, yeah, out there. Huh. Some places it's uh, required, some it's not. Some the judge can choose to do it. One would just think to, you know, cross your T's and dot your I's. You might want to do that to avoid appellate issues and things of that nature. But I know Judge Beverly uh, Cano seemed to be rather, um, I don't know, it seemed uh, put out that she was even there. <laughs> it's like, okay, Mr. Jackson, whatever you're going to do here, do it, get it done. And I, it just seemed like, you know, she was ready to go home any day. Uh, one of the yeah. issues that raised in the motion is that after receiving a note from the jury on July 1st, Saying they were unable to reach a verdict, the court declared a mistrial without providing any opportunity for defense counsel to be heard. The judge also failed to ask the jury whether it was deadlocked on one, two, or all three of the charges in the indictment. The defense motions argues that Reed cannot face retrial for the two charges on which the jury would have found her innocent, saying she is protected by the double jeopardy clause in the U.S. Constitution, which prohibits anyone from being prosecuted twice for the same crime after a verdict is reached, saying, quote, if the judge is unwilling to dismiss the two charges against Miss Reed, the motion alternative, or alternatively requests that the court conduct a voir dire, or a voir dire uh, of the uh, jury uh, or an evidentiary hearing to substantiate the uh, existence of the acquittal, uh, at the motion states. The motion adds, of course, another layer of complexity to all of this. Uh, I think we're going to see a jury being pulled. At least I would hope that they would go there. At least to narrow down where they need to take this again, if they need to take it anywhere. I guess we're going to find out in, what, two weeks what they're going to end up doing. I I just, I I have no clue. I really don't. Do you? I don't. I really don't know what to expect here. I mean, the Commonwealth has already said they're going to retry her. Again, that's, you know, that's all statements issued within like an hour of the mistrial being declared. You got to kind of get into the weeds a little bit before I think you can truly say we are definitely doing this again. Uh, there, there is a lot here. And, and this is another thing, too. Uh, and this was the issue, and I'm understanding it better, that uh, Alan Jackson had raised on the jury form of there's no option for not guilty on the individual charges. It's just mm -hmm. not guilty on everything or it's one of these charges or two or three of these charges. 
I, I get where he was saying that now. Because in my mind, too, I was thinking, well, if they're going to vote not guilty, then it's not guilty on everything, right? But no, it really doesn't because it's different charges. So you would need to put not guilty on specific charges if they were to come to a, a verdict. But I do truly wonder, I mean, we're, set, we're, we're taking it, this information from the mouth of the defense attorneys of we heard somebody told us who, who told you, where is the official capacity at which this information was disseminated to you, you know, or, or was it like the game of telephone uh, on this? It, it seems a little, you know, it, that nothing that's really going to stand up in court of we heard uh, that's not going to mean anything until you pull the jurors, you pull the jurors I think you got a different situation here. Yeah, I agree with you. It's there are a lot of unorthodox things that we saw in this trial. Now that may be how they do things out east, but we just like the the jury form. I mean, it just you're right. It just something about it felt off. Like it didn't give every option possible. So how could they have come to a, anything other than a hung jury? I just think that's what you're going to keep getting too if you just keep yeah. going on the same charges even lesser charges, quite honestly. I, I don't think they have the goods to to bring this in uh, with any sort of conviction after seeing all the evidence. Do I personally think she hit him? Yeah, I do. But I don't think it was with malice. I think she doesn't even know she hit him. I think it was drunk. It was an accident. And she probably believes that she didn't. She's probably convinced herself that or just truly has no memory whatsoever of it. So she's yeah. going to go with whatever, you know, her mind tells her. And that's, of course, going to be, I didn't do this. It's kind of just a matter of mental survival. But uh, I don't think you have enough evidence to prove that she did. And if you don't have that, then you can't convict her. It's a true statement. So I don't know. I'm not one of the free care, care and read people by any means. I think that... Uh, the uh, asshole blogger that uh, likes to harass people and intimidate people dug himself a hole. I think that his actions actually caused the jury to be hung. Uh, not that it, I'm saying it couldn't have gone to not guilty, but I think him injecting his narcissistic opinion on everything and creating this into a political campaign circus that turned people against innocent families uh it had its consequences and it did not go the way he, I think was intending it to go. But yeah. uh, it sure, uh, I guess keeps him in the spotlight for a little while longer. So he can sit there and spout off and harass people the way that he does. Um, unless, you know, he goes to jail, which would be nice. Um, just cause he's not a journalist, even though he likes to pretend he is. Um, so yeah, I think there was a lot of things that went really horribly wrong here that influenced this trial. Well, hopefully we learn a little bit from it and hopefully they do as well. Yeah, I doubt it. Want to listen ad free? <laughs> Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.